Hey guys, so this is a follow-up to my original video or guide on conquest. You can see in the card above, that's the original video giving you the basics. Now I want to do a guide a bit more advanced, as I've been playing a few conquests, I learned a few tricks here and there. Let's start with uh, unlocking nations. Some of the more advanced conquests, now EasyTech has introduced the compass item. So when you start the conquest, you choose your country. Let's say I want to do the Visigothic Kingdom, and you see it's locked. So in order to unlock it, you need to get compass. How do you get this compass? By winning conquest. And so you, but in every conquest, you see if you take, for example, the Ostrogothic Kingdom, you can do without locking. And so playing more, and you unlock the nation. Second tip, let's say that you select the nation. Okay, and then let's say that you want to do the Frankish Kingdom. Before you start, you go under the unit, you click the handbook, and check the Frankish Kingdom. There you go. To understand what military units they have. You see, they're not very good. They only have up to level 3 units. Okay, if you were to choose, for example, England, then you know that you would have up to 6 and that's important in conquest, we'll see later, because as you increase the age period of your civilization, then you unlock these uh, superior military units. But if you have the Frankish Kingdom, those uh, uh, age uh, upgrades will be meaningless, because you won't be able to use uh, level 4, 5, or 6. You can still use uh, mercenary level 4, 5, and 6, though. Okay? So let's go back. Let's simulate. So let's say I want to take the Astrogothic, as usual, you start, with, there is a victory condition, just to get the award, the star, in this case would be a three-star award, you need to defeat two nations, in this case, so that's quite a tough condition, you need to defeat the Byzantine Empire and the Byzantine Expeditions, you know, on the bottom, okay? So, um, <clears throat> first of all, there is, in every mission, there is a, a surprise army that comes. In the Legend of the Hunt is the Huns, in the Vikings is the Viking, and here, I guess, is the Byzantine. Okay, so then for will be smart to pick a nation, like the Bretons, for example, far, far away, or uh, even the Frankish Kingdom, or the Kingdom of Suebi. You see, these are nations very far from the rage of uh, the Byzantine. I, don't, I haven't played this conquest, by the way, so I'm not sure where they're coming, but I can tell you in the Vikings, that is the one I'm playing currently, they come from the extreme east, and so then you should pick a nation at the west. Okay, then, as soon as you start the conquest, the first thing you do, you click on the quest. The first quests are very easy to do, so you do them all, so you get every quest, it will get you more resources than what you need to spend. So do it up front, and also all the things you have to do are things which are useful for the future. Then, I mentioned before the age, it's here where this purple bird is. You start from the dark age, and in order to upgrade to the next one, you need, in this case, to increase the level three cities to two. And you need to do four policies, the policies are here. And uh, since we are in the policy, let me start with uh, the important uh, element is the consul. So you start with a given general for consul, but you know, choose yours. In my case, I have two good ones in administration. I have Justinian, is the best, of course. He has a 62 in administration. And check the skills of your general. So Justinian is good because he will increase the diplomacy with all powers by five each round. So it's very good to have as a consul because every, every round, while there is a natural worsening of the diplomacy with the other country, with Justinian, it will boost it. So in general, when I play conquest, I, I rarely have enemies declaring me war. And the other is the, um, the production will be unaffected by damage. So when they are attacked, and the fortress is reduced, the production is not reduced. Not a great benefit, okay? And then I have Theodora. And Theodora, she has a goodwill ambassador. When appointed to the council, 
diplomacy gained by gifting plus five. Hmm. So not great. But what is good is 77. So when you put the Lord in a big city, she really boosts the resources. So that's what I do in Conquest. She's not a great general. So normally I place them into one of my level four or five cities to get the benefits. Okay, then um, we're talking about the policy. The, as you start, the policy will allow you to move up on the edges. So start with the diplomacy, which are normally the cheaper one. And uh, you will see, for example, that uh, this one, the diplomatic relation is one to have immediately because it will boost your relation with every county plus two every round. So again, like uh, for the Theodoric natural skill, that is very useful because it will uh, counter the natural decline of your relations. And here we saw the ambassador relevant skills, what they are. You can change the console, by the way, during the game, depending on the needs. But you cannot change more than once in a turn. Okay, so when you do one, you can do research, and you got one policy done, and it's immediate. Okay. Then something important in Conquest is the use of the, see you have three views, by the way, of the generals. So you start with very basic troops. Okay, for example, this one is just a light cavalry. Okay, so if I put my style Richard on that, it's really a waste. I should rather save my best generals for the tavern so that they come with their uh, special and elite units. So you click on tavern, and here you can, the first one is free, so I get the most expensive one, which is Richard. You see, now it comes with the three Knight Templar which are the best unit in game. Check my video on units, you will understand why. And so I will, of course, recruiting in a tavern is much more expensive. So let's see if I have another castle. See if I want to recruit the cost. 450 is the cheapest, 700, and the cover is 1,000. <clears throat> so they are very expensive. And the Belisarius also. So over time, you start generating revenues and save them for the good ones, okay? Instead, at the beginning, you can put your crappy general on the given unit because still the crappy general still improve the skills of the, of the unit and increase, of course, the longevity, the health. So still is worth having. You can put unlimited generals, I believe. I, so far, I've been putting them all and I can put more. I don't know if there is a limit, but it will be a lot. Then let's delve into the most important item on Conquest. If you master this, you will do much better. The diplomacy, so critical. Okay, so we talk about to start with the policy that increase the value of diplomacy. Also, the other one useful are the one that reduce the agreement request, cost uh, minus 20, or uh, when you're forced to pay a tribute to cost less, slow down diplomacy reduction, also that's good, and reduce the penalty for breaking the agreements. So these are all useful things to have. The policy change by country. In some countries, there is one where you reduce the penalty if you don't follow the request to join war, which is one that I try to avoid when possible. The other advice on diplomacy, start late. Don't start giving gifts at the beginning. You have a little money, and this money should be prioritized in <clears throat> first building a basic uh, military defenses, to, because it's, especially when you take a small nation, you will be attacked very quickly, and so you don't want to lose your city. So you need to first uh, garrison your key cities with your crappy generals, and then you need to upgrade those cities. After you've done that, you will start increasing the policies to unlock the upper age. And then around the turn 20, maybe I would say, when you start generating hundreds of silver per round, and you have already deployed uh, your key generals from the tavern, then you invest in diplomacy. So what do you do? <clears throat> Again, in the example, let's assume that the horde of the, the conquest comes is a Byzantine expedition, okay? 
or maybe let's go to the one I'm playing, so that I'm currently in the middle of a game, so you will see the video of that, by the way. So in this case, the Vikings, they come from the east, and the kingdom of Denmark appears as well, right? So then, what you want to do is what I did in this mission. I build alliance with the kingdom of Brittany, because it's very, very far from the Vikings. Therefore, for me, it would be a waste of time. I'm the Gaelic kingdom, of course. For me, it would be a waste of time to come here and attack them and conquer them. I will lose a lot of turns, and they're really useless. Instead, they are my allies, and same as Middle Francia. And so then I just have to smash West Francia. It's very weak because it's squeezed between two allies. And then I need to worry about the, all the Eastern Bloc. Okay, how do you get the allies? First, you need to give them gift to bring, you see the bar in the top, you will see the attitude. And so this is uh, Ali, <clears throat> uh, you will see the thermometer. If the thermometer is, uh, gets to below six, minus 60, <clears throat> then they will declare a war. And the, the lower the score, the higher the probability they will declare a war. It's not automatic. Peaceful from minus 60 to zero. From zero to 40, they will grant you passage. <clears throat> so if the score is only two, the probability they will grant you will be low. But the higher the score, the higher the probability. I don't gamble. I always make my request when I get 100%. <clears throat> and likewise, then if they get to the blue spectrum, you can request Ali. Now, you cannot go from peaceful to ally in one shot, you always need to ask them the passage first, and after they agree, you can ask them ally <clears throat> once they are in the right spectrum, okay? Now, the issue is that when you have two allies, like in my case, Brittany and, and Middle Francia, it's possible that they will ask me to go in war against the other. <clears throat> if I accept, I will break my alliance, of course. If I reject, I will reduce my diplomacy score. So if now it's 100, I reject the alliance, I go down to 60, which is the, border, the bottom border to be an ally. This means I need to immediately give them a gift to bring the score from 60 back to 80 or 90. Okay? So very important. Believe me, after a certain number of turns, so depending on how good you are, but around the turn 20, 30, you generate more money than you need. You already done all the policies. You already done all the age upgrades. You have re re rescued all your general from the tavern, and so all this money use it in diplomacy. You will really accelerate the completion of your game. Um, of course, the other basic advice: don't be at war with too many nations, because especially if they are surrounding, because then you will have to protect all your fronts. That's why the diplomacy is useful, to be at peace uh, with uh, one side of your borders, so you can focus your armies in the other. Then, uh, during the game, often you will receive a request to join them in a fight against another country. So my advice, if the other country is far away, and especially if it's weak, then accept, you will get the money, <coughs> resources, silver and iron which are very useful. If uh, they are, they said, a big country close by, do not accept, unless you were planning to attack them, because as I said, there don't be a war with too many. If you reject, of course, you lose a 30 to 40 penalty points, and then you need to be careful with uh, monitoring that score and use gifting to bring it up again. And uh, when, let's say in this case now, you see I'm attacking West Francia. West Francia now is a dwarf, very small. And so if I click on them, I don't have yet the chance, but in certain situation, when you are far more dominant than them, they will, will be, at the bottom you will see, now you see truce and negotiation, you will see another bottom, which is a surrender and they will give up, and the, the territory become yours. Again, it's a faster way to conquer than by fight. So I don't fight too much in conquest. I win a lot of territory by alliance and surrender. Okay, that's about it for diplomacy. 
<clears throat> the last thing I wanted to leave you behind is with the equipment. <clears throat> Every general, as usual, you can add an equipment. Now, for example, with this mission, I started in Ireland. <clears throat> so if I put all my star equipment to the generals, then they need to cross the river, the, the sea. By crossing the sea, I need to give them at least the transport ship or another ship, which hence erases the previous equipment. Then I get back to land, and I ran out of my equipment stock, so I don't have any more catapult to give them or things like that. So that means that if you are on an island, you know you want to cross the sea at some stage, be very selective in which equipment you give. Try to give them as little as possible, especially if conquering the Thailand is easy, so that then you reserve the most important equipment once you get to the mainland, okay? So that's about it. I hope you found these tips uh, useful. I have been competing already, how many? Uh, seven conquests, I did, I believe. I've done the barbaric one, two, and three stars, and also the hegemony of one and three stars. And then I've done the Vikings, the Gaelic Kingdom, I already completed the first, uh, the basic condition, and now I'm going for the hegemony, so you will see those videos soon. And all with the F score, uh, perfect score. Thanks a lot to these tips. So I hope you will find this useful. Take care. If you like this video, as usual, please click like, and don't forget to subscribe, and the subtitles are available in many, many languages. Take care.